have confirmed that Tune Talk CEO Jason Lowe was detained in Dubai in September, but it was over a scuffle, not possession of drugs. In case you haven't heard, the rumour was sparked after a Malay tabloid reported that the head honcho of a Malaysian telco was arrested in Dubai International Airport in September after the authorities found drugs hidden in his luggage. The individual was widely speculated to be low and the rumour mill went into overdrive. However, IGP Mohamed Fuzi Harun Tobernama, the reports are not true. He says he's now waiting for a full report from the Dubai authorities. Mohamed Fuzi also confirmed Lowe's statement to The Edge yesterday that the fight at the airport had actually involved his friend. But it was Lowe who ended up being detained. Tabung Haji Properties has rubbished allegations that it was involved in a money laundering case involving Saudi Prince Al Wali Talal. Just to bring you up to speed, the prince was arrested as part of an anti corruption raid over the weekend. His son Khalid runs Crest Mount Capital, which had closed a 100 million Aussie dollar investment into Piety Investments, a Sydney residential developer. And because TH Properties has investments with the Piety Group, it's been linked to the fiasco. But the firm says the allegations are baseless and false. It says all investments are made directly from internal funds and that under no circumstances has it ever sought or secured funds from Crestmount Capital or other external investors. It says it has obtained all required regulatory approvals in Malaysia and Australia for its projects in Sydney and is not privy to dealings, if any, between Crestmount Capital and Piety Group. Petronas Dagangan says third quarter earnings more than tripled on the back of higher sales volume, improved margins as well as a 424.6 million ringgit gain from selling its Philippine LPG stakes. Net profit surged 206% to 761.7 million ringgit. Top line was up 22% to almost 6.7 billion ringgit. It declared an interim dividend of 20 cents per share. MDN CEO Datuk Muhammad Ibrahim Nodin Muhammad Yunus says the group intensified its sales and marketing campaigns and expanded into digital marketing during the quarter, which paid off in terms of gross profit and sales volume. Moving forward, PetDAG is expecting the business environment to remain challenging. It will continue to focus on inventory management, supply and distribution efficiency, as well as OPEX optimization to ensure the group remains resilient. Petronas Gas says third quarter net profit was little changed, having inched just 1.2% lower from the previous corresponding quarter. This was due to higher depreciation in line with the completion of capital projects and higher utilities cost of sales from costlier fuel. Net profit dipped to 417.4 million ringgit from 422.7 million a year ago. Revenue increased marginally, just up by half a percentage point to 1.16 billion. The gas processing arm of Petronas declared an interim dividend of 16 sen. On prospects, Petronas Gas is expecting its new LNG regasification terminal in Pengirang, Johor to contribute to its revenue stream. It's expecting its performance to remain stable on the back of strong and sustainable income streams from existing agreements signed with Petronas. Westport's latest quarterly earnings were flattish on lower container throughput and higher fuel costs. The country's largest port operator saw net profit inch 0.14% lower to 150.8 million ringgit. Revenue came in just 3.8% higher at 492 million ringgit. During the quarter, Westports handled 14% fewer containers down to 2.14 million TEUs. CEO Ruben Emir Nanlingam says the container shipping industry has just gone through unprecedented recalibration and realignment processes, which affected almost all major liners. Due to the ongoing changes, he expects the company's container throughput to be 7 to 12% lower compared with the previous year. 